But somehow, South Fork Ranch wasn't the same without him. Now he's been lured back for a substantially higher salary. But no one, least of all a rather coy Patrick Duffy, will say what part he'll play. Will he be Bobby Ewing or another character? We'll have to wait and see. But he is back with Dallas, and much of the credit goes to Larry Hagman, JR, who persuaded him to return over lunch. I think if that offer would have been proffered by anyone other than Larry, I would have turned it down just on uh, instinct, just as a knee-jerk reaction. I would have said, no, I, I left and I don't want to come back. And I've said that in so many interviews, it was becoming second nature. I didn't even have to think about that response. But when it came from Larry, and we had a long talk, and it, you know, everybody makes a lot more out of everything than there really is. It wasn't too convoluted. It was a couple of good friends sitting down having a drink, and and being silly and, and saying, uh, why don't you come back? And I said no, and then he talked to me a long time about it. And Basically, it was very light-hearted. It wasn't a lot of soul-searching or anything. And I just went home, discussed it with my wife, and then we opened up the avenues. Did you say, for instance, you must be absolutely mad to turn down $50,000, $75,000 an episode, take the job? He said I was mad when I, when I left the show, so I hadn't gotten any saner in his opinion over one year. Um, the, you know, Larry's always first to point out the financial benefits for doing a show like this and he of course was the first to realize that uh, monumental financial benefit and uh, basically he said the sky's the limit and you basically could get whatever you asked for if you wanted to come back uh, that was attractive but it certainly wasn't um, weighing the, the the scales in the favor of returning if I hadn't have been able to discern that the company was in a different frame of mind, that Lorimar was in a different frame of mind. And I think that my leaving did one thing, if, if nothing else, is it made them realize the value of the individual as opposed to the, the mechanics of the show. And uh, I don't think I was the only individual that should be valued, but I think what they saw is that every one of us as central figures on that show are invaluable to the working of, of Dallas. And you take any one of them out, and it's not that you can just plug in another actor you have to actually have the elements that made the show popular in the first place. Now, coming back as Bobby Ewing is, is certainly going to strain the credulity of the audience, isn't it? Well, now, we're making a major assumption here. Well, the CBS uh, entertainment chief has said you're definitely coming back as Bobby I know. Ewing. I was there, too, when, when we had this huge CBS press thing, and uh, he did say that Patrick's coming back as Bobby, but um, he also told me I'd get a motorhome. I don't have a motorhome yet. So anyway, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to throw enough flack and diversion out there so that people will get behind the game of just who I am. That's why at the end of the season last year, when I made that little appearance in the shower, they said, and Patrick Duffy as question mark. So we want to keep it a question mark until. But we actually hear that the actors don't always see the script before the actual episode. Is that true? Do you not know what's going to happen? We do now. The things that were not shown to us were the, um, the red herring scenes in terms of the for your eyes only scenes that are written and we've shot three of those alternate beginnings and basically we know how we're going to pursue the show and we're locked into only pursuing it one way now because we're in episode number 12 um, but in the beginning in order to again uh, camouflage our intent we filmed a lot of bogus stuff now tell me about the the atmosphere on the set because in print we've seen linda gray complaining almost bitterly about you coming back saying it's a male chauvinist program and that uh, too much emphasis is placed on, on your character. How do you react to that? Well, I, I, I react the same way that I, I might really object to someone's fashion or mode of dress, but it might be my best friend wearing it. Um, Linda is not taking a personal barrage at me in terms of that, but she's, she's venting her feelings, which are very you know, sincere on her part. I think the show is more male-dominated. It's not the question of being chauvinist or not. It's, it's the question of maintaining a certain quality factor that made the show a number one show in the first place. I, I understand that frustration, and I can sympathize with it, and I don't take it personally at all. Uh, my coming back indicates the direction that the show is going to have to go, and that is going to be uncomfortable for certain people, and there's just no getting around it. You seem to be very concerned about the sort of characters you play. Now, the new character, is he going to be a more gutsy character than the old Bobby? I would say that I'll be more happy now than I, than I have been in the previous seven years, not because there's going to be a major shift in emphasis, but just I think there is a now a concentrated point of view that there wasn't before. The uh, kind of characters that I play and that I probably will play the rest of my life are very difficult to write for. 
the good is very difficult to write for. The tendency is to just say, well, he's good. And then you just pigeonhole him over here. And then you write all this wonderful flamboyant stuff for, you know, the negative quote unquote characters. Um, I think just because of the hoopla on my return, there's at least going to be a, a, a point of view towards that character in, in an effort to make him more rewarding and more substantial and have qualities that uh, people can relate to more than just the quote unquote good quality. How complimentary were they when they tried to lure you back? Did they actually say, look, the ratings are dropping, we need you? What did they do? Well, basically, yes. Um, you know, it's not a good negotiating ploy to come on your knees to somebody and say that we can't live without you. So uh, that didn't happen until after I signed. <laughs> but um, I was in a wonderful position not being an employee in terms of renegotiating. Now, in the course of seven years on the show, we constantly renegotiate. You know, but you are obligated to play that part, and you do the best you can in your negotiations, but you have to report to work, basically. But I was no longer an employee, and they had asked me to come back, so I didn't feel I had to acquiesce any of my positions at all. And when the lawyers and my agent and myself got down and plotted out what we thought was fair, and also fair, you have to understand that fair is not fair in terms of the average income of somebody in the, you know, in the, in the normal workforce, but it's the... It's your fair share of the profits made by a company using you to promote something such as Dallas. So I got down to what I thought was fair and what I thought indicated a certain respect for my input into the show, and we asked for it, and they accepted it. I was shocked, to tell you the truth. I would have started higher if I'd have known they were going to be that easy. But uh, I'm very pleased with what they offered, and it indicated to me that they not only wanted, you know, an actor to fill a certain role, but they wanted me specifically to come back, and that was very gratifying. Do you think you'd be able to manage on $75,000 an episode? I could manage on even more than that. Um, my, what I make is, I always say my daddy told me, and my daddy didn't actually tell me, but somewhere along the line I learned that the, the two things you never discuss are the amount of money you earn and women other than your wife. So I, I basically adhere to that, and then I stay out of a lot of trouble. But um, I was happy making what I made, and I'll be even more happy if that's possible on what my new salary is, which I won't disclose and no one yet has accurately forecast what it is. So you're not even in the ballpark yet.